The Lepcha community is the indigenous community of the Darjeeling Hills and Sikkim. Mayan Liang, as they say, is their ancestral land. It is the Lepcha word for hidden paradise. According to the Lepchas, in the old times, Maya Liang stretched over the eastern Himalaya up to Titalia into the vast plains of India, now in Bangladesh, as well as other parts of Bhutan and Nepal. The land of the Lepchas had been hidden to the world beyond the Himalayas before the British colonization of Darjeeling and Sikkim in 1835. The colonization led to dramatic and constant shifts in territorial boundaries and human geography of Darjeeling Hills and Sikkim. Darjeeling tract, an integral part of the Kingdom of Sikkim before 1835, became a new geopolitical unit under British sovereign, while the Kingdom of Sikkim had been reduced to British suzerainty under their tutelage. Bhutanese occupied Kalimpong had been added to the colonial territory after the Anglo-Bhutan War of 1864. Throughout the 19th century, the colonial mapping saw the first major mapping of the eastern Himalaya into territorial, geographical and ethnic units. The hidden paradise of the lectures no longer remained hidden as the indigenous community of the land they were evicted from their land, Mai Liang, displaced from pristine tradition, lost cultural memory and ethnic dignity. They became fugitives in their own land. Lepcha shared the same fate with most indigenous communities in the Western Hemisphere and other parts of the world. Impoverished, backward, homogenized by dominant cultures and subjected to majoritarian intimidation and exclusion for centuries. The Lepcha community remained within the attributes of primitive, savage and a dying race. But the story of the Lepcha community in the Darjeeling Hills is not about their despair and doom. It is about their spirit, vigor, resilience and resurgence. It is about their lonesome journey towards life, hope and consciousness. The lectures lost their land, but in their imagination, Mai Liang remained immemorial. It is woven in their memory, which is inexorably linked with the hills, the rivers, the trees, forests, and their history. The lectures of Darjeeling Hills have been engaged in reviving their mile Liang, a symbolic mile Liang, which is essentially a cultural space and integral to their root. Who are the lectures? The ethnic name of the community is Rong, and hence their language is known as Rong Ring. In fact, the nomenclature as Lepcha is a distorted, anglicized form of the word Lapche, coined by the Nepalese immigrants to Darjeeling. The term literally means scurrilous speaker. The British improvised the term as Lepcha. The Lepcha community is one of the oldest communities in the world. The British colonizers tagged them as primitive and savage. And the image still persists in popular imagination. Yes, indeed. Like all other old communities in the world, Lepcha community did have a so-called primitive past. They survived on hunting gathering, fishing, and agriculture for their subsistence and survival. They had and still have profound command over nature, trees, herbs and medicinal plants. The rivers and hills in the region 
still carry lecture names. Since the lectures, I think, are one of the few tribes in this region who have names for every bird species that you see, every butterfly species, every grass species, every bamboo species. So, what I mean to say is uh, they are very rich in terms of natural history. If you look at the lecture glossary of birds, we find that they have specific names and these names are not just chosen randomly. Keeping in mind its plumage, its color, its characteristics. So, these point to the fact that the lepchas are born naturalists. The lepchas used to worship the nature, most importantly Mount Kanchenjunga. As it is believed, the first lepcha man and woman, Nazong Nyu and Fadong Ting, were created by God from the virgin snow off the peak of Mount Kanchenjunga or King Tsum Zangbu. In Lepcha language, King Tsum Zangbu means the auspicious forehead peak. There is no concept of heaven and hell in Lepcha worldview. It is believed that the departed Lepcha soul returns to Pumju, the source of origin or Mount Kanchenjunga. Mount Kanchenjunga is their guardian deity and Mun and Bungthing, the traditional priest and priestesses, protect them in spiritual and temporal life. Traditional lecture houses are perfect examples of eco-friendly and climate resistant technology that the community developed in their so-called primitive days. The new leadership have revived the technology and built a few new traditional houses in the Darjeeling Hills. But they were not an oral community. They had their language, script, literary and textual tradition and their language was their aesthetic medium. They had religious scripts as well as poetry song and folklore. Most importantly, they had their music. The lecture community developed a rich textual tradition. The texts are known as Namtho Namthar. Most of the Namtho Namthars are religious texts but some were written on aesthetic style to be used in poetry, song, folklore, etc. The old Namto Namthas are large scrolls made of thick folded handmade papers. They have their traditional grammar book called Lazong. Lazong's systematized letters, vowels, diacritical marks, circumflex signs, and other affixed signs are combined, conjoined, and arranged in alphabetical list forming syllables and monosyllables. The first hint of trouble in the lecture paradise happened in 1642 when the Tibetans treacherously took over Sikkim, of which Darjeeling was also included. Many people were also proselytized into Tibetan Lamaism. But the Tibetan rule for the Lepcha community is not remembered by the people as a saga of distrust, displacement and dispossession. Lepchas and the Tibetans used to intermarry. Many Lepchas were retained within the close circle of ministers, nobility and army generals who enjoyed power and trust of the king. Following the Tibetan conquest, the Lepcha community, however, 
virtually lost their political control over their land and territory. The slow disintegration of the life and land of the Lepchas had seen mortal blow during the British occupation of Darjeeling by a deed of grant on 1st February 1835. Apparently, the Darjeeling tract was taken over by the British to build a sanatorium for subaltern British soldiers. But the real reason was strategic. Firstly, they wanted to contain the Nepalese military expansion in the east. Secondly, to conquer Tibet and open up trade in Tibet and China. And thirdly, to contain the Russian expansion in Tibet and the Indian subcontinent. Captain Lloyd was the major actor in signing the deed of grant of Darjeeling Tract from the Raja of Sikkim. On securing the Darjeeling Tract, he adopted two significant measures. In the first place, he issued a proclamation that the residents of Darjeeling Tract, who were mainly the lepchers, would have to abide by the laws of the colonial rulers. They no longer remained the subject of Sikkim Raja. Secondly, in his correspondence with the Raja of Sikkim, he persistently referred to the Darjeeling Tract as uninhabited land. It was indeed a gross violation against the indigenous claim of the lepchers in their land. The lepcher community, on their part, refused to accept the sovereignty of the new rulers and retain their loyalty to the king of Sikkim. The cost of this so-called insolence was dear for the community. The lepchers were evicted from their ancestral land, Maya Liang, and had been pushed to remote corners of the hill. Some fled to Kalimpong, which was still under Bhutanese occupation. The British acquired Kalimpong after the Anglo-Bhutan War of 1864. They were further evicted from Kalimpong heartland through the introduction of land revenue settlement around 1900. The British rulers built their imperial edifice in the land of the lectures. Roads, railway, administrative buildings and most importantly the tea gardens. The rulers required manpower to build the colonial infrastructure but they could hardly trust the free-spirited lectures. The rulers encouraged migration from neighboring countries and states, especially from Nepal. By the beginning of the 20th century, the Nepalese community became a majority in the Darjeeling hills. Darjeeling turned out to be the cosmopolitan habitat of multiple races and one of the most celebrated tourist destinations in India. Rong Ring, the lecture language, was the language of majority before the arrival of the British. Dispossession from land had been accompanied with displacement from pristine tradition, culture and language. The deed of grant of 1835 was written and signed in both lecture and Hindustani language. Captain Lloyd's successor, Dr. Campbell, abandoned the lecture language for official correspondence and introduced Hindustani instead. Lecture language was not altogether abandoned by the early colonizers. It had been used by the Christian missionaries to convert the people. Churches were built in Darjeeling and Kalimpong. The missionaries reduced the language to translate the Bible and Gospels in Lepcha language. In course of time, most Lepchas forgot their language and became Nepali speakers. Lepcha language no longer remained 
as an aesthetic medium. Colonel G. B. Menering was an exception to this pattern, an empathetic administrator, as he was, of the British Raj, engaged himself in compiling a grammar of the Lepcha language. A grammar of the wrong Lepcha language as it exists in the Dorjeling and Sikkim Hills, first published in 1876. Menering compiled the grammar with a philanthropic mission to allow the Lepcha race and language to die out would indeed be barbarous and inexpressibly sad. He traced the origin of the Lepcha language far anterior to Hebrew and Sanskrit. The Lepcha community in Darjeeling Hills considers him as a messiah for the community. Menering's birthday on 18th July is celebrated in Polongdong, the village where Menering used to live. The momentum was never lost through the passage of time. The nonagenarian Lapon Sonam Chiring Lepcha stands as a link between the first and second generation leaders of the cultural movement. He is born with the genius of an artist. He revived traditional lecture musical instruments. At the same time, he is also a visionary leader, institution builder and a poet. Sonam pursued an ethnic resistance through music. Sonam received several awards including Padma Shri and Sangeet Natak Academy Award. Sonam revived history. Sonam traced the historic past by taking long journeys to the remote corners of the hill and found Gebu Achuk as an icon for the community. Gebu was a part historical, part mythical personality. The Lepcha community attributes great might, valor and magical power to Gebu. As is narrated by the present leaders, Gebu established an independent kingdom in the 17th century in Kalimpong and neighboring regions by defeating the Bhutanese forces. He built forts and regularly resisted the Bhutanese forces against their territorial encroachment in the region. Sonam's most enduring contribution is the Ethno History Museum in Kalimpong, showcasing the Lepcha history and culture and thereby tracing the root and indigeneity of the Lepchas. It is a unique museum in India as it narrates the history of the Lepcha community from primitive past until they had been drawn under hegemonic existence. The Lepcha community of the Darjeeling Hills is responding to the new consciousness despite adverse socio-economic condition of the majority of the people. The people in remote villages have little access to a viable livelihood engagement for subsistence. Access to education in the remote areas is limited as also other amenities for a dignified living. The present leaders have taken up the challenge to improve material condition of the deprived and depressed. Firstly, to sensitize all lectures of Darjeeling Hills to look back to their indigenous past. Secondly, to arrange for sustainable livelihood for the poor and depressed and thirdly to sensitize and empower women in this trajectory. The events in remote areas are meant to engender 
awareness among those people about their indigeneity and cultural roots. The awareness is generated through song, dance, drama, traditional games and food. Young children are encouraged to paint and draw nature and their surroundings. Medicinal plants and roots and regularly exhibited in the events. Ren N.T. Lepcha, Sonam Chiring's eldest son and an ex-serviceman in the Indian Army, organized a musical troupe with young and talented boys and girls. Ren N.T. travels around India with his troupe to share music of the lectures and has received accolades from far and wide. Revival of traditional food habits such as worms, insects, ants, fishes, local fern, moss, etc. as source of protein, vitamin, calcium and other nutrients is part of the new movement. Thereby, Lepcha community is connected to the current global movement to revive the food habits of the indigenous communities to manage food scarcity for the present and future. The new consciousness dwells on the revival of history, folklore, religion, livelihood, language, dress, education and above all a vision about man-nature relationship, the sites of their root. The folkloric tradition reflects the indigeneity of the lectures in the land. The Rongnyu Rangit is a popular myth among the lectures. Rongnyu is the lecture nomenclature for Tista. A large number of religious events are held at the confluence of Tista Rangit with the chanting and rituals of Mun Bung Thing, the traditional priest and priestesses. While the new leadership has been trying to revive Mun Bung Thing cult, they are at the same time forging a renewed bonding with nature and the surrounding. The site is connected to the oldest and most popular folklore of the Lepcha community. Rangit, the male river, and Rongnyu or Tista the female were lovers. Rangit grew unbounded due to his male vanity and started flooding the land, mountain and forest at his whim. He ignored his lover Rongnyu or Tista. The Divine Mother became angry with Rangit and curbed his power and forces. The story, as they say, taught them to deplore vanity. The people are nostalgic about their Sadirlang, a stone which, as they say, used to fall from the sky with lightning. We let our call, call when anybody this thunderbolt stone kept their new building, there will not be harm from the thunderstorm ball. The stone or its paste, as it is told, has magical power to cure human and animal and it is a good omen. Oh, yeah. 
music is the spirit and soul of the life of the lectures. Many of them who did not receive formal education will still instantly compose a song impromptu on a person or an object. They call this the apriya. The tradition is very much live. Sonam is a maestro in this apriya tradition, but he is not alone. Non-violent, but resolute for their cause. Lepcha community has a different approach to nature. For example, they have consistently voiced protest against random mountaineering and pointed to the adverse impact on the global environment. Their reverence to nature is intricately linked with their traditional faith and belief. Lectures are one of the very few indigenous communities in the world who endured and withstood the onslaughts on their ethnicity, culture and very existence over centuries, but the community is able to hold on to the root. It is indeed a difficult journey for them, a journey against time.